This comes off the machine in one hit. You've got to have some sophisticated machines to do that. Now, we're here at Midlands 3D to find out how they started their business with just one Instagram post. Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. So Paul, the question is, everyone is dying to know, how did this all start with an Instagram post? Um, well, it's pretty crazy, uh, to be quite honest. So I was, about eight years ago, I was the kind of guy who was in the garage playing around with a 3D printer, um, posting what these amazing things I was creating on, on Instagram. And out of the blue, I got a message from, from a guy who just said, could you produce something that looks like this? And me being the idiot I am said yes. Um, I figured out how to draw one up. I then showed him it and he said, that's better than anything we've got. And I thought, that's fantastic, you know, great. I've done a great thing for somebody. And he messaged me about a week later and said, can I order 300? And, and of course, I just said yes, with having one printer. Um, bought six more printers. And within a few weeks, he was ordering batches of 300, 400. I didn't actually realize, but he was the, man, the OEM manufacturer who then had resellers. Um, and really, it all just grew from there. I had to buy more, more, more and more machines as the demand grew and grew, and it was a fantastic story. Absolutely. I guess some people might be daunted by the idea of making 300 apart after you mm -hmm. just made one as a bit of a favour, but you jumped head first into That's what I love, Paul, is your, <laughs> I guess, you just your ability to say yes to what might seem like ridiculous requests. I wouldn't say it's an ability, more of them. <laughs> but it certainly went to, you know, I had to, I had to take, take the opportunity, you know. I, it's. Uh, a really, really good opportunity to just see where it was going to go. You know, I knew that 3D printing was growing at the time. You know, this is eight years ago, so it's still, still knocking. Uh, it was on a the new doors. technology then. Yeah, it was still new at the time. It was still quite a, a sort of exciting thing to try and do. I and had those, no idea those where printers it you were using in the gar in your garage, which I absolutely love. I can imagine you sat there <laughs> tinkering in your garage till two in the morning. Um, they were the same kind of technology we've got here, which is FDM. Yeah. Now, what does FDM mean? So FDM is fused deposition modeling. It's basically layering plastic one on top of the other by drawing the lines. Um, yeah, these, these are very basic machines at the end of the day, but there's a price point for them. So we still produce a huge amount of parts for customers where the, fun the form isn't quite as important as the function. And you know, we can, we're using recycled filaments and producing parts in very decent sized batches. Brilliant. And you've got loads of machines. So this is real high volume manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. How many machines have you got? How does it work? So at our peak, we had just over 100 machines and that allowed us to do parallel manufacturing. So if a customer wanted a lot of parts, uh, you know, we could literally spin up a, almost all the machines in one go, get the part turned around and delivered to the customer. Or, you know, we're obviously ch chugging away as well at, at batch orders as My well. My God, you can imagine there's, there's only about eight machines running right now. If you had 100 machines running, make a bit yeah. of a noise. It we're going to move on now. So what? Well, you're making smaller parts. What was the demand from your customers later on? So it kind of moved on. We went from uh, high volume to large format, large format, then to multi-jet fusion, which was a whole load more expensive than that. And what I find kind of scary is actually HP are a bit like Big Brother here. They're, they're <laughs> watching those machines all the time, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, they're there on demand. If we need them, you know, there's something happening with the machines that we weren't expecting. If we're having part quality issues, HP can actually connect into these machines and look at all the sensor data. They can look at the logs and they can figure out what's going on and then a combination of us helping them and running test prints, that kind of stuff. Um, they can tell us what's happening and we can bring it, then potentially even have an engineer on site next day to change parts or to, to refine or, or tune the machine. I love it. If it was me, I'd definitely just call them up, say, look, go and check it out. I'm going to have a cup of tea and probably go and have a pizza. <laughs> uh, but what also I find is, is, I guess in hindsight, these machines were an obvious investment to make. It's the next step for your business. But before you made that investment, it must have been quite a daunting decision. How did it, what was it like? Uh, well, obviously, I mean, it was a massive change. We, uh, we could have bought the entire room of FDM machines that we had for the cost of one of these machines. Absolutely. They're completely different. Uh, entirely different. Uh, but it was about the future. You know, there's SLS machines that have been around for a long time. There's machines that are really good at prototyping. Um, we don't want to go for after either of that kind of stuff. We, we wanted the production uh, engineering quality, uh, robust end use parts. And we want to be able to do that at a manufacturing scale. So these are about the only solution out there that, that is designed from the ground up as a manufacturing solution, and HP are very clear on that. You know, the whole, the whole scenario of having build units and processing station and, and a closed loop of, of supply and, and all the consumables even means that you get that consistency of delivery of, of the parts over and over again so customers can be reassured if they're buying an MJF printed part, they're going to get it on a regular basis and the same next, next in, day in, day out. And again, with the, uh, the Dimension machines as well, 
the Dimension machines produce that consistent result again. Straight, you, you know what you're going to get. And what I love is the fact that you've got these parts and they're going into product, the end users, they're going to end users, they're going to products, yep. they're being used, they're not just prototypes, they're, they're being used for real. And if you open up these machines, um, you can actually see there's 3D printed parts inside those machines as well. Um, when we were in Chicago, I saw a few presetters that had a few bits of handles, all the kind of little touch points that were nice kind of organic shapes were all 3D printed as well. So you kind of start to see this technology seep into, into real life. Uh, absolutely. I mean, if you open up the, 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 uh, the printer, you can see MJF printed parts in the MJF machine. It's always a good sign. Exactly. They, they trust in their own technology. And what I also love is the fact you've got loads of F1 cars here. Look at all these beautiful... I mean, these engineers who love F1 would be loving these models. Why do they love them so much? It's just a great demonstration of what, what uh, MJF can actually print. You know, the amount of detail that you can get in there. These are printed in one piece, and that blows people's minds that that, that level of detail can be achieved in one solid piece. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not a big fan of F1, unfortunately. I've probably lost a lot of fans saying <laughs> that now, but... Um, I know that some people, you, you've got clients who, who absolutely love these models, but yeah. I mean, you've not designed these because these are, these are crazy. Design, no, they're not. They? Uh, they're, they're, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to try and take credit for them. They are, they're, they're a very talented designer over in Spain who, who produces them. Yeah. Um, thankfully, we have the permission to utilize them as That's well. It. Thank you very much, great. Raphael. We appreciate, appreciate it. it yeah. uh, but you guys do offer a design service. Well, it's not just the kind of the machine capacity. Ab absolutely. We needed to add, add that value add. Um, so when we've had customers come to us with traditional, let's say, parts that they know they want to MJF them or they want to 3D print them in, in a different technology quite often we'll look at the part and say well actually you could save yourself a small fortune if we change this bit or change that bit or add this feature um, to get around the other thing you know it's, it's adding that knowledge of what we can do with 3d printing to be able to then uh, give the customer the very best solution possible brilliant i've learned so much about 3d printing more specifically mjf multi-jet fusion um, here at midlands 3d in stone so if you're interested in trying to improve those parts Get in touch with Paul. He obviously knows his stuff. I've learned a hell of a lot. I hope you have learned a lot watching this too.